Swerve was like, and stop. Yeah. <laughs> no then, facial expression no whatsoever. Exactly. And then, but you like that move, right? Yeah, that's that a beautiful move. That, right? that must have been a crazy one because you had to pull Habib oh. off of Connor. Oh right? my God. You, you were in him. there for that. What's the funny part about it is that even though that whole brawl was chaos, all those guys were extra respectful <laughs> all the officials. And I'm like pushing against him. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to wrestle her, but I've got other people I've got. You. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm over here now. I think one of the things that brings the reality out is like is the apex in her fight. You hear everything. You hear the exertion. You hear the breathing. You yeah. hear. I mean, it's surprising. Like you hear people break. And some of the funniest moments I've had has been uh, Chell Sonnen. Really? He can tell you anything with the most sincere face. I mean, yeah. Like, you believe anything he says almost. When you ref this fight, is he like talking to the guys? Like, what are some funny okay, things? Okay, the funniest one is. Have you ever gotten like threatened by a fighter for like calling a, a fight off or something like that? Have they ever approached you and be like, Herb, I'm gonna f you up? Um, probably some. <laughs> <laughs>
Like they saw your ethnicity. They're like, nah, give him cognac. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do this wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you were just in uh, Bangkok. How, how was that? Just starting off, how was 1FC repping internationally versus like UFC domestic? Okay, what's really funny is, you know, you would think that refereeing, it's, you know, the same. But there are some differences. And when you, little minor differences do make a, a, a little bit of a difference. So one, it's... Um, one thing is that one is kind of like the inherent tense of inherited pride space, mm. yeah. right? It's in a cage, in a ring often, sometimes yeah. in a cage. Uh, referees, when we're over there, we're more Japanese style. So remember, like, when you used to watch Pride and all the shows, uh, all the shows in Japan, the crowd seemed so knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. They were like, as soon as, like, someone gets an advantage, you know, there's like, clap. Oh. Yeah, oh, silent. Right, right. <laughs> but if you notice, like, the referees are jumping around going, hey, that's important. Who catch? Oh, I yeah. Well, yeah. I thought they were right. being Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do everything. Uh -huh. yeah. So I, we, we do do a little bit more of that yeah. there. So I have to remember when I go there, I'm supposed to call catches, wow. and you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, in a in a ring, I have to focus on a ring. They have a few different mechanics. Yeah. Like they said, like the UFC, they kind of catch it live as everything happens. Like if mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a point or if I'm going to do anything, mm. you know, I'm going to do it. I'm on my own and they, and they'll catch it. Whereas, uh, at one there's, there's mechanics and they want to make sure they catch everything. So what I have to make sure I let the director know what I'm going to be doing, you know, before especially I with soccer kicks. I bet that's kind of crazy too. No, right? they don't have soccer kicks there anymore. Oh, they got rid of it. Yeah. I mean, knees to the head. What about knees, knees to the, the head? head? So that's, but right there, that is the one thing that I'm going to start doing more is teaching people more about the differences in the rules. Cause there are differences in the rules. One, knees to the head of a grounded opponent are allowed. Mm. Uh, so you can knee someone in the head when they're on the ground. Uh, the spiking rule is different. Like so, from slams and yeah, stuff? Yeah, so, so in unified rules, if you pick someone up and control their body and drive their head into the mat, it's called a spike. And that is a very, not all files are the same. Mm. That's probably about the worst file we have, right? So with, um, and there's some differences. So, so there's all these weird things. If it has an arc, and you put them onto their head, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Or if they were going for a submission, like maybe even a Kimura, and you started it, and you put them on their head, it's okay. Whereas in one, if you put someone on their head, if you pick someone up and you slam them, it's your responsibility as the one who picked them up to make sure they don't land on their head. Wow. Spike them on their head. Now, if they land on their body and their head hits, that's one thing. But you can't take them up and drive them onto mm. their head. That happened recently with somebody. Yeah. He got disqualified. Or he yeah, got yeah, that, it, it was yeah. like a no contest or he either I lost. I think he got disqualified. The referee was a big old meanie face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Her being shit talking. <laughs> meanie face. Big old meanie face. No, that yeah. was me who disqualified him. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that that is the... Um, and and let me tell you, it's it's heartbreaking because I, I I I do know the guy a little bit, and he's a really nice guy. And there's differences in the rules, but they put that rule is one of those that you have to address serious because mm -hmm. the, you know there's consequences that can come from spiking someone onto their head. Well, absolutely, I don't, don't want to even yeah. mention. I don't even. We all know what those consequences are. Yeah. I don't want to speak them, but uh, so you have to address some rules a little differently. You know, yeah. grabbing the fence is a foul, but you know it's not harmful. Yeah. So uh, I have a question about that, right? We've, we've been seeing a lot of, like, fence grabbing to me in the last, like, few years have been mm -hmm. so prevalent. I feel like a lot of fighters know that they can get away with it up to a certain extent. And they're sneaky. So they're it. always trying to sneak it in, right? Mm -hmm. What is the protocol for a ref in terms of what they should do for people who constantly grab the fence, right? Because I've been seeing it a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. Like, just they're just so sneaky with and it. And they know how to do it when the ref is on the other side. And yeah. Uh, they're kind of, like, angling when, like, it. like, for example... So let's address real quick, just let's frame this, because we're framing it. Who constantly grabs the fence? Like, for example, like one that I remember consistent, like Leon Edwards, um, Sean O'Malley does it very sneakily too. Like, I've seen mm. him do it multiple times. And it's just hard to see. You can only see afterwards when you see a different camera angle. Because mm. when you're watching it, there's no way you would notice. He does it so quick. Mm -hmm. So I guess, like, my question is for you as a ref, what, when do you allow them to, like, how do you, Reset them, gain position, take a point. Like what? What is the that protocol. rule? What's the so protocol? So it's, it's it's you know it, it, one of the things that's you know, and I didn't think about it, but what's challenging when I do uh, shows like this and we talk about it because you guys are really smart and have good questions is one. There's a lot of things that are referees' discretion. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now and we have our discretion and we talk to each other and we know these things and and the uh, athletic commission knows it when we have our debrief, but I. 
sometimes I wonder, should I go that deep into how I make my decisions and what's my discretion? Because then people, the fighters are really smart. Yeah. And they really know how to game the system. Oh, oh that's you know what I mean? Mm, so, you know, gotcha. so every time I... Damn. Like, Damn, you, Dan, you can't reveal. You almost let Sean O'Malley game the system, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, See, I don't know these things. <laughs> no, no, but, but, <laughs> but it's good, though. But, but I will say that one of the things, and, and this is what we do tell the fighters in the meeting, uh, when I go into a rules meeting with them, is that I understand that it's a natural reaction to grab the yeah. fence. It's hard. You know, the people who are falling, about to fall on their face, and don't do something in their power to stop that from happening, that gene's been weeded out. If you're going to fall, you reach out. It's, it's a natural yeah, reaction. Yeah. Okay, so... I, if it affects the position of the fight in a way that I believe an advantage has happened that I can't fix, mm. whether it could be the fact that the guy burned a bunch of matches to get that takedown, like, man, he went in, he's doing here, blah, blah. Mm. Now he finally gets him elevated. He's going to slam him. Maybe the guy right. reaches out, grabs the fence. Maybe he gets him down. I'm like, but man, he was going to slam him. I can't slam him for him. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's where I might take a point mm -hmm. as a way to even out the fact that you've been. And, but that's all referee's discretion. Yeah. So if it just reaches out and it's no harm, no foul, we'll get a warning. Uh, if it's too many warnings, of course, a point's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but a point can happen with no... Uh, with no warning, if I believe it's um, if that's the way to balance. So it was going to be a big position change. Yeah, if it's yeah. a change in the position, or even if it's a small one that somebody worked really hard for, because mm -hmm. now you've worked a lot and then you didn't get no re any reward mm -hmm. for it. You know. Yeah, that's a really so, fine so it's hard. line. Yeah, yeah, it's a really fine line, and you got to make it right then and there. And you got to make it real time, and so you know, and some, and there's going to be mistakes, and there's going to be times where you know you. You you were you made it and you looked at it and you go back and look at it and go you know I should have taken a point for that, but you have that freezed in your mind and you go okay now you're ready for it next mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things where it's like experience is really helpful you know because with these our sport is really three dimensional and so you're gonna see things that like I know the one thing I know is that. I've been refereeing fights for probably around 25 years. <laughs> Crazy. And There's a so, kid that's 25 years old uh, yeah. out there. And, and I know that I have not seen everything. Yeah. I know that I, every time I go to work, that's the one thing I prepare myself for, is that I'm going to see a certain variation of a situation that I've never seen before. Is there any scenarios that you've seen other refs or other colleagues that have gone through uh, like a fight where you're like, fuck, I don't know what I would do. Because you guys all position. talk yeah. too, right? So it's yeah. like, you guys like, hey, <laughs> like dude. hey, my boy Jason. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm glad that wasn't me. You know, yeah. like, so I, I come, I like, I, and, and what's, what's jacked up is like, you know, we have these meetings afterwards and I let them know, man, I'm glad that wasn't me in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're more <laughs> passive aggressive about it. And yeah. then you just walk out the meeting. That's all you say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, sucks for you, guy. <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't me in there because, because that was a hard situation. But since it was you, let's not waste it. Let's talk it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. And so then that way I can, uh, we can all be prepared for when it happens to us again and get the best probable outcome. Because then sometimes there's no uh, exactly right thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. You're just going to try to get the best. You know? Yeah. Because I, I guess that would also go for the same for the, the ref's discretion for eye pokes as well, right? Yeah. Because that uh -huh. seems to that's be like a tough huge one. thing. Because that's so yeah. hard to tell. Like... How much is it affecting the fight? Like, because I don't know. I've never had a whole finger in my eye before, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at something like, for example, Bruno Silva and Chris Weidman, he tried to get it overturned and it didn't happen. Everybody's upset. They yeah. think that it should be overturned completely. Like, what's your opinion on that? Um, well, they they had the ability to do it then and there, I think. Um, but then the way uh, the replay, you know, so. I think they went to the scorecards. That's yeah, what it that's was, what right? They allowed. Yeah, but it was the like thing about it, he won the first two. So here's rounds. that's exactly. So let's say even if they go to the scorecards, he was still winning. Mm -hmm. Even if you he was winning, even if you took a point, I think he was still winning mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that. So, um, the I, I if I've looked at that match, I don't really want to go into exactly what I think the best thing was or what could have happened. But there are a lot of different ways that could have been played out. But the way the rules are written. Uh, there's some things in the rules that are kind of like toggle switches, like some little if then you mm. must mm. or you know what I mean? Yeah, and because they're so the, variable, right? And some of those hold our uh, hold our hand. And, and that one, I think the rules make it difficult to get to what the right thing should be. Yeah, I, I think. You know. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of fans, I think it's more of the expectation of the fans where they see something happen like that. And they're like, oh, he should be disqualified. It should be over. Yeah. But like you said, he did win those first two rounds. Chris Weidman did. So. If that's the hard part. Happen. I think fans want hard set rules so we can understand what's yeah. happening, right? Mm -hmm. So right. when we see these fights, we're just like, we can't make just of anything. Mm -hmm. So right. 
because then we start going to our own rationale. If I got eye poked, or if you know when yeah. that whole fight happened, Chris Weidman stabbed in the eyes like forty six times. It's <laughs> yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah. So should he have won? Of course he was winning. He couldn't <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jab, 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 jab. With eye pokes, what about even the threat of the foul giving yeah. you advantage? Oh yeah. That's about every time you're about to come in and take advantage. You know, you hit somebody, bam, you hurt them. You want to come in, they're like, hey. Yeah. Now they circle off. They get off the cage. They get out. Like, okay. And so the threat of the eye poke is can be advantage. So that's something that you know I always talk about in my instructions, and I try to be a little bit tough on that. Like if I see guys preparing, you know, I don't want to wait until they do poke someone in the eye, mm -hmm. and I don't want to keep let them keep getting distance like this. You know, I think the new gloves maybe help. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what did you think about those? So I I um I got to try them out i got to touch them and really you know give my opinion on them uh, in new jersey mm -hmm. and i was kind of a little bummed that they didn't you know bring me in a little earlier i mean i'm part of this process a little yeah bit. yeah absolutely you know I mean? and uh so i was ready to kind of come in there and shit on what they did <laughs> <laughs> if you would ask hey me, sucks for you walks out of the room yeah, yeah. Why you ask me, i'd have told you that you know but but actually you know what i think it was <laughs> I can't hate on them because yeah. I think on um, one of the I thought that the gloves were going to kind of hold you into this position a little bit more yeah, yeah. which is going to kind of make another type of eye poke right uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? more like, strong eye poke yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what the glove shit. actually does is it um, it's a little bit more free and so I think one of the things that happens is uh, you know when you're grappling with uh, you know if you've worn the gloves that, that the UFC use if you tried those like when you're grappling. There's a lot of your hands have to fight those gloves quite yeah. a bit, and like there's a lot in. of grip fatigue. You know what I mean? That happens, mm -hmm. and when that's happening, then all of a sudden the hands are getting straightened out and their fingers are tired. So later on in the fight, I've seen some guys putting it out there, and I'm like, man, I'm telling this guy, but I I can tell he's trying to be mindful. Because but I've worn these I've worn gloves before. This is his hands are tired, mm -hmm. and one of the things they did was they. They made the glove in a way that alleviates a lot of that. And I think that's going to be better for fights all around. No one should have to fight the glove and their opponent at the same yeah, time. Yeah, so, you yeah. know what I mean? yeah. Do you feel that as a ref, it's important for referees to also have fight knowledge in terms of training themselves as well? Absolutely. Okay. Because you you did MMA fights as well. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I like to do martial arts. It, it, you know, and I've had some MMA fights. And, yeah, I think if you're going to... Officiate this sport. You should at least train the sport. It should mm -hmm. be something. You know what I mean? Like we get guys who come in from other sports, other backgrounds, and it's like, well, why don't you want to train the sport? You got referee the sport you have a background in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you know, yeah, because yeah, like I, I think that's super important too, right? Because I I always wonder like how can you know how important a position is, how important these things are when you've mm -hmm. never experienced it yourself. Right. And that also goes for like fans too. If you've never ever trained before, it's easy to yell at a fighter and say. Just get up. It's like, yeah. all right, uh -huh. guy. Because you, know right. I mean? uh -huh. like, you hear that a lot. Like, I've been yeah. to a couple of UFC fights, and I would say, you know. You, well, you hear coaches saying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stand up. Just stand up. Yeah. Just stand up. Yeah, but yeah. then you hear what's crazy is <laughs> when you hear some of these times, like, these coaches giving really good, like, because anyone could talk about some really, like, confusing instructions. But yeah. some of them have these instructions where they can talk. I've seen them talk through someone through something that was above their technical ability. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, that's some coaching. Yeah, yeah. They can see <laughs> yeah, yeah. the position. Yeah, you, you see right them. There. They're like calmly, the perfect okay, instructions, this, and the instructions. And like, he just talked them through that. And yeah. I don't think that guy knew that move. You know? <laughs> oh wow. <Yeah. laughs> have you have you ever gotten like threatened by a fighter for like calling a, a fight off or something like that? Had they ever approached you and be like, Herb, I'm gonna fuck you up? Um, probably some. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, can't say the name. Yeah. <laughs> no, Chuck right, Liddell used to try to make preemptive threats. Really? Oh, like, really? I saw what happened with this fight earlier on that you did. And uh, just, what well, it used to be after the show, after he'd be party, he's coming back in. Yeah. He's like, if you do that to me, I'm whooping your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. I'm like, all right, okay, yo, dude. Chuck I'm like, okay, Chuck. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, man? It's hard to argue. Because <laughs> I would feel like that would make it hard for you to do your job sometimes, too. It's like yeah. these people come up and they're, you know, they're all fighters. They... You know, they're a little aggressive. There's a reason why they like fighting for a living. Well, okay, so first of all, that's that's just a funny anomaly. Yeah. Most of the guys in our sport are very respectful. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Um I you know what I mean, they they I think we all are. We also we're so there's a new young sport. We're also happy to do it. That you know what I mean, we want to respect the structure that's there so that we can keep doing it. 
So I think that's in everybody's mind. Minus but, Dominic Cruz. You know, he's yeah. going in. Uh, oh, my, Dominic Cruz goes in. <laughs> yeah. oh, and he feels it. Like, when, he, when you talk to Dominic, it's like, it's real passion right there. Like, he means what he Person. says. Yeah. And, you know, he's not one of those people who has words and doesn't hold himself accountable to words. You know what I mean? He, he means what he says, and he's ready to do what he says, you know? And uh, you got to have a lot of respect for that guy, yeah. you know? But, uh, yeah, no, but most of the time, there's no, uh, no, people aren't threatening and things like that. And, if, and it's really weird. I'm, you know, doing this job for me is, um, I mean, I've said it before that I feel that it's a sacred trust. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm making a little jokes here, but in in reality, it's a very serious job. People, uh, people's dreams and hopes and aspirations are there and you have to balance that with their uh, physical safety. Mm. You know what I mean? Everybody in our sport is a smart guy who probably could have done a lot of other things and they've taken this path and there's a lot of sacrifices that go there. Every fight is their most important fight. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so when it's, when, you know, when you give somebody like a sacred trust like that, when you threaten their uh, physical safety, you know, where you might not be a Superman over something else, you're like, oh, but wait a minute, it's my sacred trust. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Because I feel like it's hard for a referee sometimes because no matter what you do, there's somebody that's gonna say something that you did or didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do. absolutely. So if the fight was what they feel this it was cut off early, it's like you ruined this fighter's life, or if you let it go on too long, you could have killed, killed them. You ruined right, this fighter's right, right. life. And yeah, everybody. Yeah, has, and so you know, you have to. You know, yeah. Address the Herb's haters. Yeah, yeah. You have to be. Uh, you have to have somebody you're bouncing it off. Yeah. And you also have to know, hey, you know, uh, you, you. For me, I I try to look at, um, and I don't always look at every match I've done, you know, and relook at it. But I try to, uh, if I have something to look at and go, you know what, could I have done that differently, or not? You know, because if I don't try to find where it's my fault, you can't get any better. You know. Have you guys so, ever spoke to like Mario Yamasaki? It's like, do you want these fighters to die or like what's? <laughs> I don't yeah, are you guys all friends? Mario what's the relationship? Yeah, everyone's yeah. friends. Well, or? we try. We're all friends. Some guys are, you know, some actually, but some of them, you know, it's a competitive thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, because you guys are you know, top dogs. Yeah, because on top of it, you know, it's a, it's a people want to do this. So it's competitive sometimes. I would oh, wow. never want to be in your position. Man. Some That's, backstabbing? I'm getting Yeah, there's some. some. There's yeah. some. Yeah, right. Believe yeah. I'm not going to tell you who. Yeah. <laughs> just so you but know. Just, you know general just, stories. Just, just, say it. just so you know. We'll bleep some, it out. Sometimes there's beef. <laughs> <laughs> With the big dogs? <laughs> there's beef. Yeah. There's oh, beef. So, dude, so I, have a, I have a question. Do some refs kind of throw you under the bus for things that you, like, oh. maybe a call they didn't agree with and they might complain to, like, maybe the commission or be like, hey, don't hire this dude think I think Is there shit like that happens like that? Beef can happen like that. Damn, you know? bro. But at the same time, you have to be smart enough to know that, like, you can't, um, you can't put someone down who's in a weird place mm. just to further yourself. Because the bottom line, you're going to say what you think should have happened, and when that ha it's going to happen to you. Yeah. And so you <laughs> <Yeah>. better. <laughs> you're going to have your own. You're going to have to do what you said. And if you don't really believe what you said should be the outcome, if you're saying it just to throw that guy under the bus, oh, it's coming. then you're going to come back to you. going to come back to you. It's going to happen. And it's not like a karma situation. It's just the amount of fights we referee. It's the nature of the sport. Yeah, the nature of it is that those situations will come to you. So when you see it in your assessment and you're in the meeting, you you just gotta be, speak to her. Yeah. be honest. Tell what you would do if you're in that situation. Did you ever have a, a conversation with? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody has asked you about this, but with the Ben Askren and Robbie Lawler fight, right? Because mm -hmm. how that interaction ended with you and Robbie Lawler was so nice to see, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't typically see that with fighters. It was right? a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, because he was like, "What the fuck?" And he was like, "I love you." I love you <laughs> you're a hell of a fight. I was ref. like, "Oh shit!" I'm gonna oh, kiss shit. you, her. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! No, it was, yeah, I mean, I haven't really talked too much about it then, but I mean, I've always had a lot of respect for him and like you know uh the uh you know i'm i'm grateful that he has respect for me mm -hmm. um i think you know that situation i looked at it again i think i would do the same thing again i think we all like i think we, we all when yeah. you saw like when you see his too. arm go limp dude like that was that's a yeah. hard little that's a hard position and, and then you and, see his hand yeah. come up like a thumb like a tiny raft if we if we you don't see we that have, um well, because not all, not like I said, not all fouls are the same. Not all submissions are the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a dangerous choke. Okay, a rear naked choke, bam, okay, everything's there. All right, I've got, this. what's an easy situation? You know, I can see them. Um, it's a choke in a safe place. Not all, you know, there's a few different things that make chokes happen. And um, not, uh, and that choke involves flexion of the spine. 
mm-hmm. backward. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and then on top of it, once someone goes out, they're not resisting anymore. And yeah. so it's just all. And so you got to really oh, think I about see. that. And it's one of those chokes that, like, I feel like some people don't respect. Yeah. So they might not take it seriously, and then they go out like now without them even goes, noticing. Now someone goes unconscious, and the leverage is someone's got someone walked all the way out there so you have your own with the lever point and it's all yeah that's a uh, their belly that's down. not a that's a situation where the referee needs to make a decision mm-hmm. injuries could happen but well, I think that on. people need to understand that that's why they are there to save the fighters right. yeah this is no, a consequence this that's is a the, real, real consequence yeah. like and, and and a lot of times when people are watching it they they don't realize that it's real these guys go through real things these guys this guy is gonna you know, have to go home and, you know, he's had this beating in front of the world, mm-hmm. his family, his children, mm-hmm. his wife. You know what I mean? This It's real. These guys are going through real things. It's a know? heavy fucking sport, dude. Yeah. Like when you see, I heard some guys talking on a podcast where they were talking about like, yeah, you see the guys winning after someone gets a big KO, you, you pan over the winner, but then you forget about the guy who gets knocked out right? and how long they're laying on the floor for and then the walk back to the locker room and them having to go to the hospital later. Like that stuff is just so heavy. Yeah, man. From yeah. the whole coaching staff, for everyone watching, friends, family. So it's just like, sometimes we forget, like we love this sport so much and we're such big fans, but then there's such a great consequence. I just yeah, I think because yeah. you get... um. You get kind of numbed to how real it really yeah. is, you know. Yeah. I think one of the things that brings the reality out is like, is the apex center fights. Mm, yes, when there's, there's nobody, there's no there. crowd. Yeah. You hear everything. You hear everything. You hear the 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 exertion. You hear the breathing. You yeah. hear and you hear. I mean, it's quite it. You hear people break. Is that different for you from a reference standpoint, from being in a giant arena to mm-hmm. nobody in there? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, what are some differences that you could think well, of? Well, one is I can, you know, I I know I can hear everything. Mm. You know, sometimes the arena is so loud. I'm like, am I going to hear the clapper? Am I going to hear oh, the bell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's so loud at some of those, you know, situations. Um but yeah, you can hear everything, and it just seems a little bit. It's different. It's mm-hmm. more. It's Do you feel like you could understand the flow of the fight better, or like the, the positionings? I overall? think when I'm when I'm in there, you know, the crowd doesn't have, you know, once the fight has started, I'm kind of zoned you're locked in. in. Yeah. yeah, and so I can see things, but it, it is a different feel. I'm always surprised you guys don't have like facial expressions, like <laughs> you know what I mean. Like when I'm watching a fight, mm-hmm. like for example, if we go to Josh Emmett and the Bryce Mitchell knockout, oh my god, and the refs just you know running over, mm-hmm. is everything okay? I screamed. I would ah, you know, as a oh if I was a ref, god. everybody would just record my reactions. You know, I'm just like, oh shit, you're too busy sprinting to right. the guys. Yeah, shove yeah, them up. I can't, I can't oh say shit. that I've always been poker face. I'd like to try. But yeah, yeah. There's times very where, stoic. Where face. people, have, yeah, where people have <laughs> stoic face. I like that. Stoic. <laughs> yeah. the stoic Not face. for real. Cause like you don't really have that much emotion. Like when you mm-hmm. when you see you fight, like when you're refing. When something big happens, you're so locked in, dude. Yeah, like you, I just see you sprint, like you just take <laughs> up, and then sometimes no expression. Like sometimes you might hear audio of someone, some so like somebody be like, "Oh shit!" Like that, like when I someone's think I've been yeah. mic'd up. Audio. Yeah, you know. But like other than that, yeah, there's definitely a fame. Uh, this one I think is where. Everyone's like this. Oh, this yeah. save, bro. <laughs> people turn this into me. <laughs> people's elbow. But look, you look how quick Herb's like, and stop. Yeah. No and facial then, expression no whatsoever. Exactly. And then that and this. Uh-huh. Slide slide. <laughs> but you like that move, right? Yeah, that's a beautiful <laughs> move. That right it's, a, uh-huh. it's a great move. I was like, uh-huh. Herb's yeah, athletic because yeah. you cover his body. You know, right, what I mean? right. Uh huh. You throw yourself slide. Uh huh. It's, a, it's uh-huh. even Dustin Poirier was Safe. like, Herb hit me with the people's elbow. It was, yeah. it was dope. Herb did <laughs> You would always cracks me up. It's a whole compilation. Like, you know Save when the me, <laughs> when the refs break it up after somebody either gets knocked out or they get yeah. TKO'd. I love how hard the ref pushes the other fighter away. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. you guys shove the shit out of them, and it makes me laugh. Especially all. the little guys, <laughs> the little yeah. flyweights, because you have to because right? they're like in well, there. Well, there's something in the moment, and and the thing about it is like we used to always have to like in mm. in the beginning when when I first started refereeing, every time, especially King of the Cage back in the day. Mm. And, Every time we had to like tackle someone, if you couldn't, like it's your fault if you couldn't tackle them off. Mm-hmm. It was like, in the beginning, it was almost part of the sport, especially with certain guys. Like, how many shots could you get in after the referee stopped you? And they expect to be tackled. They expect to be yeah. cross faced. They're like, it's it was just a part of what they're doing. Now things are more respectful, and that's not always the case. You see more, way more walk offs. Yeah, right? and, and that's just part of when the culture. They, you you know? touch them, they stop. But you can't. You always have to be ready because if you touch them. And you're not in position to stop them, 
and they decide to go. You know what I mean? So mm. you should always still always try to be in position, you know. Fuck. Yeah, because I'm always like, <laughs> what if a fighter gets angry that you pushed him? Yeah. Well, their whole career would tank after that. <laughs> they touch oh, a referee, sure, you're like, sure. adios, you'll never fight. What happened to Paul happened, Daly, right? Happened, Paul right? Daly yeah, Paul did Daly. that, and he got yeah. kicked out of the UFC. I don't think he... Did he touch the reference? Or was it Koshek or something? I think he was going after his guy a little bit more still. Uh -huh. And then the referee put in into it, pushed him, I think. I don't think he went yeah, after He him. went after Josh Koscheck, and then after that whole altercation happened, I think the nail in the coffin was when Dana was trying to calm things down, mm -hmm. and he wasn't listening to Dana. I right. think that's when Dana was like, oh, you're, like you're fucked. Right? And, and the referee was not, I think it was, um, I think McCarthy? it McCarthy? I don't know, was it McCarthy or was it um, Mergliata? I'm, I don't even oh, know. Probably, probably one of them. Yeah, but it's not big like boys. you know. Yeah, it's a big boy and not a guy who's you know. It, you know, he keeps it. He runs a tight ship. I was rewatching the Connor Habib fight. Like mm -hmm. that must have been a crazy one because you had to pull Habib oh. off of Connor. Oh right? my god! You, you were in there for that. Off because yeah, yeah. he was holding that choke. And yeah, yeah. He, it looked like he wasn't ready to let go despite no, no, the he, tap. Yeah, he wasn't. And you had to like break his grip and then pull him off, and then he was still like yeah. running at him. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you had to like get in the middle. What's the funny part about it is that even though that whole brawl was chaos. All those guys were extra respectful, <laughs> all the officials. So it was like, okay, <laughs> so I, I pull him off, right? And then he's still going after him, talking, and I'm like pushing against him. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to wrestle her, but I've got other people I've gotten. You. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm over here now. Nagatani's <laughs> man, respectful. Respectful. It's so really funny. It's like everybody keeps coming in. The, you're trying to break people. They're like, oh, well, I'm not going to fight you, but I'm going to go around you. And this guy's over here. That's I'm not so listening, funny. but nobody nobody was threatening a referee or or uh, one of the inspectors. They're trying to get around they're you. They're grabbing guys. the guys. Trying to juke you guys out. Once you grab them, you're, they're like, oh, okay. But if you don't get them, they're like, there's plenty of targets. Because <laughs> yeah. that's a situation where you said you can't hear anything. Because how loud mm -hmm. was it in there? Yeah, it was really loud, yeah. Because I just imagine it being, like, you're just muffled. You just hear muffled noise at that point because it's just everybody screaming. Mm -hmm. Every every Irish fan possible, every Dagestani fan. Yeah. Like, I just remember watching it on TV, like, how can anybody listen to anything? Right. And I think that's why when the Apex fight started happening, it was a good perspective for people who don't, who have never seen an actual MMA fight, mm -hmm. to understand how devastating kicks were. Because mm, right. you could... Here, yeah, we hear the smack, the the shins hitting Ooh, the other shins. Yeah, anyone who's never felt those kicks, oh. you know what I mean? Like some of these guys, even just the fact, anyone who makes it that level is a different breed to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like especially heavyweights when they're cranking <sighs> kicks on each other, two hundred pounds plus kicking each other. Just one of those kicks, a mere mortal, is just enough to you know what I mean? <laughs> Dunzo. What's the yeah. scariest heavyweight fight you've been a part of? You know, I'm not good for scariest or for or for. Most extreme. I mean, yeah. you think of some scary ones I've been a part of. Heavyweight fights. Because I know that you got punched by DC in the John <laughs> Jones fight. <laughs> I was like, he just punched Herb D. <laughs> I oh, he's trying to break it up. Yeah, you know? he, break says it, he says it wasn't on purpose. Yeah. I think I think he was so frustrated he would just want to hit him because it was a frustrating moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, if you remember when it was the he, fifth round, it was when it was ended, right? Right. No, it was the fifth round. But what John did to him was was horrible because it was like the clapper hits, clap, 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 right? And so it's 10 seconds left. And so when the 10 seconds left, you know, he had pretty much obvious that he won on points. Mm. And so John just raises his hand. So even uh -huh. though the fight's still going, he raises his hand and walks away. And DC's like, just kind of doesn't go after him. He's not still engaged in the fight. And so he kind of walks away. And John's like, you really? You take your eyes off me? Bam! And yeah. fires on him. And then he's just so angry. I could I if he if I can't not frame blame him for hitting me. Yeah. <laughs> you're just so livid, you're hitting everything. Yeah. Like his oh, eyes oh. might have been closed. He was just yeah, throwing like, dude. Oh, I'd have been so pissed off. Oh man. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I can't blame him. But you took a shot and you ate it like nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. Smooth. <laughs> it was off the after you pulled rounds. I don't think I would have taken the first <laughs> first round. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was like that moment where I felt like DC felt so disrespected because already yeah. like John Jones at that point was known as you know pretty dirty, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that was a gentleman's agreement. Yeah. Like you have your hand, you're walking away. Fine, we'll just end it like this. I lost, and then yeah. he John Jones just had to do that one last thing. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm gonna still sock you in the face. <laughs> oh, so you know what? It good, was good after. Good it was after John. So the, the punch hit John first and then hit me. It's the first time I've watched it at this angle. Bing, pap. Oh. 
left. Ping, to John, me. <laughs> then, good position. <laughs> good position. Yeah, I, like, I, like, I like your distance. pull after that. Yeah, yeah, close the gap, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look how healthy John Jones looks. He doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah. I know, huh? Oh, yeah. He got fat boy neck now he's, with he's, the extra. He's, extra he's a big guy there. now, dude. He's a big guy. So, like, another big, crazy fight that happened recently was UFC 300, right? Because yeah. you were refing Jamal Hill. Uh-huh. And that oh. whole moment with the Pereira thing, like, what was your point of view? Because <laughs> yeah, like, when he kicked, he kicked uh, Jamal Hill, kicked Pereira. Smooth as fuck. Right? And then uh-huh. you're about to come in to stop. Uh-huh. And then you just feel this fucking hand. Yeah, was, was, was it the force? You're like, was, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> right now. All right. Jamal Hill Has that ever happened you. before? <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Hill hates you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jamal Hill hates you. He's been talking shit about you. I think what I heard something because it's interesting. You guys, let's watch it. Can you pull it up? Oh, yeah, I'll pull it up, yeah. Okay, let's stop it when he puts his hand on me. Because <laughs> I think you know, like... You go like, because okay. he is not taking it well two months after the fight. <laughs> it's just out of nowhere. It stops the nutshell. It's shot. just such a weird situation for people because it felt like they were pretty buddy buddy after the fight. They yeah. got, they're getting along pretty well. You know, Jamal Hill's dancing after the fight, and all of a sudden now he's like, fuck all of you. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. Where's this coming uh, from? Because this... they keep taking them down. Okay, bam. Touch. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't think. So I don't think that. Uh, I don't know that Jamal Hill hates me. Uh, <laughs> uh, whether he hates me or not, I I have a lot of respect for him. That guy has dog in him. Hell yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so he's fucking funny as hell too. So yeah, so regardless. So anyway, but um you know what's the funniest part of about this? Okay, boom, stop. Oh, you call okay. time back on? <laughs> and then now after I call time out, does anyone move? I don't think anyone moves. Let's yeah, say, you're right. It let's, go, free. Let's, let's go back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, after I call timeout, can you put a freeze on that? Yeah, I'll put a freeze. All right. Once I call, no one moves. Yeah, everyone stayed still. Okay. Kick. Time. All right, now let's see here. Does anyone move after? Let it go again. Back on, touch gloves. Now we're back. That's it. No one really. That's the universal yeah. sign, right? Well, here's yeah. the weird part about touch this. gloves. Come back so, in. So Jamal yeah. Hill's thing is this, right? He goes, "I didn't see Herb Dean say time back on." But if you watch this clip, he goes, "Yeah, like this." The yeah, yeah. He goes, "You ready?" So and I don't know. I don't know. Any touch gloves? Happened. I I think that I think there's some. Okay, there's a couple of analysts mm-hmm. who are you know in our sport who have like who are really good at picking out sensational things, and they're and they and they're so sincere when they talk that. I mean, I think that they can talk you into believing yeah. your or their words over your lying eyes. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, like, because I went back and looked at that. That was one of the ones I right away. I was like, "Huh, how was that? Was that mechanically mm. correct? Was it clean?" And I was like, I watched it. I was like, "Yeah, that looked clean." And then I, I've heard that some uh, analysts were like talking about it and, and talking about something that actually you don't see. They're like, mm. "What if after he called timeout, you know?" They, uh, you know, he was able to get a position and you don't see it happening. No. But he's like, well, I just have to say they did to get clicks. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's going, really I'm okay. I'm out. Boom. Stop. Uh huh. Thumbs up. Jamal. And there you go. Yeah. So, you know, for me, I know that my job and my focus is to try to referee clean matches as much mm-hmm. as I can get. Some of these people who have jobs in their sport, maybe they know their job is to get clicks. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sure. really. The truth doesn't matter. Entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. You know. Somebody say, "Hey, I know what my job is. I'm glad he knows what his job is." And uh, some of these guys who get the clicks, the bottom line is, God bless them for it, because most of us are pretty boring. <laughs> 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 it makes the sport fun, right? Yeah. Most of like us it are makes it boring. controversial. Yeah. It makes yeah, it yeah, most of like us first are take. boring. But yeah. some of these guys, man, are. Uh, Man, I'm glad they're here. Even if you throw me under the bus. It's just kind of funny. Like when <laughs> <laughs> someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Throw me under the bus. <laughs> yeah, and if you're talented, you know what I mean. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I like that clip because you could you could kind of like review everything that people. I mean, it's mm. the funny thing is like we could just watch it for ourselves. Right? Yeah, we could yeah. see it. So, you but know. that's the funny part about it is like because I, I think there's some of them when they're analyzing they go and then this happens and you clearly don't see it happen. Yeah. But <laughs> when he says and then this happens, yeah. Well, that's you, you'll see that one of my favorite things to watch right it now takes the position. Yeah. It doesn't say which position. Yeah, yeah. The position. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's very vague. You'll see this like with film breakdowns. Like people will do this right. So they'll they'll break down. Let's say something like Baby Driver, right? And they go, Oh, the director chose the 50 mil before this, and then you'll they'll cut a clip. Somebody will call bullshit. They'll cut a clip to the director. They go, I just like the way it looked. 
<laughs> you know? yeah. But they're going on this whole breakdown of mm-hmm. why he chose this, the lighting, and the director's just like, nah, I just kind of like look it. cool. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. Bro, it's like Jordan Peele and Get Out. He's like, nah, I wasn't trying to do that. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> no, it was just the light was there, and I thought that was the lens I had. And mm. that was it. But, you know, you could people who could speak really well can convince mm. you of fucking anything. Yeah. Absolutely. And so yeah. you'll see that with all these, like, fight breakdowns. It's like, and then you'll look at the person, and they look like, you know, MMA guru or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've got some good gurus. <laughs> uh, other, other iconic fights, you know, UFC 300, that was a big one. Uh, I, I realized you were there for the first Anderson KO from Chris Weidman. I was. How was that, being in that arena? And were you shocked when it happened? Okay, I kind of was because, you know, you'd seen, Anderson, so. <laughs> you'd seen Anderson do his thing where he's playing yeah. so much, you know what I mean? And you've seen him hit, keep playing, mm-hmm. and and he's, you know... He's going back and, and and Weidman's still swinging. He's like, okay, he's doing yeah. the head thing. I'm just gonna keep swinging and keep swinging. And then he's further out of position, and then boom, he catches him. And I'm like, did he would get caught for real? No, he's caught. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you have to run it because that's like peak Anderson. Like yeah, that's yeah. when he was doing I think that to I was everybody. Pretty close. I was pretty close at the time, so I didn't have to run in that much. But I, yeah. I remember that I was like, okay. Yeah, and there it was. It was that there's the KO. It was such a weird, like, sharp downfall for Anderson after that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't gradual. Mm-hmm. There wasn't like, ah, oh, it was a little competitive here and there. It just went peak, poof, all the way down. And I don't right. think I've ever seen that with any fighter. Mm-hmm. I've, we've seen it with some other fighters, I, you know. I'm, but I'm not. I'm not going to mention it. But I, you see that sometimes that happens. Mm. I mean, how? I think that's really tough. To uh, what got you there is the hunger to be at the top. Mm-hmm. I think. You know, it's crazy to have to, you know, get uh, to get yourself ready to fight, to defend mm-hmm. and fight these other hungry people when they're trying to get to the top. You're already at the top. Especially if you've been KO'd like that, right? Like yeah. when you when you get KO'd stiff like that and you drop and then the next fight back, you break Shit. your shin. That's yeah. Like, like that is so warfare. crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like two years after that too? Yeah. And yeah. it's like if you're the if you're at the top of the game, like... Anderson was at the time. It's like, why are you coming back? Like, yeah, I was dude. there for both the shin breaks. Oh, oh my god! So for the Anderson one, and then when Weidman got his shin broke. Bro, that was so. Maybe you're the reason why it's crazy. happening. <laughs> <laughs> the Herb, the Herb, the Herb D. Color curse. <laughs> there's a there's a couple of fighters who, and it's funny. Like after they kind of stop, it's not funny. After they're like, man, I felt like you were not my good luck charm. Hey. Oh, and, and like, and so like, don't guys, blame me, man. Some guys who I really looked up to, Damn. like guys who really looked up to, he's like, yeah. Every time you're the referee, something weird, and I got hurt. I'm like, oh, they're man, calling this you is heartbreaking Drake. coming from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you want me to? What do you want me to say to that? <laughs> Drake curse, dude. The Herb curse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Um, oh, what, there's one thing I wanted to, to ask you about. Uh, so this fight happened. I'm curious about like other types of. I feel like you're in a lot of the big fights, right? Uh, you also do some smaller promotions as well, but I don't think I've seen you in any kind of like weird promotion <laughs> fights. Like, are you familiar with the Eddie Hall yeah. fight oh. where he was? How fighting, would you begin like, to oh, ref this? Two v one throws the <laughs> guy. Knock. Oh my god! So Eddie Hall, former stronger man, uh, strongest man comp- competitor, is fighting two twins. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh, that's hilarious. So like, have you? Okay, first of all, have you done anything like these? One of these weird international. Okay, like, I have done something strange, but not this. Okay, I do. I was one um, promotion I used to like to go out to a lot was uh, RXF in Romania, What's and that? they've had some weird stuff lately. Like what? But I haven't been out there. I've never been any of one of their weird ones. You know what I mean? They used to be uh, more competitive MMA, but now they're more influencers. And I like to referee influencer fights. Bottom yeah. line, you know, it's like. It's just amateur fights. I referee amateurs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's great when influencers fight each other because why they're bringing something to the game. Absolutely. So why it's great that they fight each other. And it's just amateur fights where people have reasons why people watch. So there's mm-hmm. nothing. I, I like those. Oh. But uh, this is hilarious. It's <laughs> this is crazy. It's, I don't think I would want to referee that. Oh. Like that. You yeah. know what is crazy about this whole thing? So in the in the pre-fight, the press conference things. These, you watch the twins, press conference? I don't, know, I don't know who they are. But mm. they smacked Eddie Hall upside his head. No oh way. Oh, my God. And then God. Eddie Hall is just taking it. Why would they do And I'm this, like, brother? are you insane? Eddie Hall, after this, in, a, in an interview, he goes, I felt my fist go right through his face <sighs> when he socked that kid. And then when you see the other twin trying to fight. The power bomb like, good. He's literally giving him love taps oh. in the face. He's being so kind. But that punch right there yeah, he was sent insane. Them. He sent yeah. them that. The strongest man in the world <laughs> that's been training in MMA uh-huh. for the past six years. They shouldn't have taken this fight. <laughs> yeah, they Why? should not have taken this fight. And also, don't teach this guy MMA, bro. That's the last <laughs> thing we need is this giant of a man. 
Eddie Hall was going through it too. Like when he was going through his whole MMA stint, like yeah. he was just cracking people huh. and as he started getting. Look at wow. That. I've never seen a person. Hey, but that's that. nice. That was nice because he stayed within unified rules. Yeah. He didn't foul <laughs> drive him. Yeah. He was yeah, thinking straight, that. You know, straight power bomb. What would Herb like me to do? <laughs> well, funny, funny, those, he did those, do a pants grab, though. <laughs> my, my friend, my, the promoter in Romania, yeah. who does these crazy fights, he called me. He said, okay, so we're going to have five on five fights. We're going to have multiple Amazing. referees. That might be kind of yeah. fun. Then he's like, oh, so. Um, he didn't call me to be a part of it. He just wanted to make sure he's Consult. like, should I, you know, as far as in the rules, should we have. Uh, if one guy jumps on another guy, is it okay for somebody else to jump in while they're grappling? What do you think? I was like, I don't know. Uh, they do it in those ones in Russia. And, <laughs> and there, you know, there could be some collusion, but at the end, there can only be one, right? And yeah, he's like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just been like, hey, is this a serious conversation right now? No, you were serious. He's <laughs> yeah. serious. like, what if Tiger comes in? <laughs> Yeah. Bites face of opponent. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Just don't spike. <laughs> Those are jaguars there. Yeah. Yeah, jag now can the jaguar bite everyone? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're entertaining like a serious conversation. <laughs> it's like, is there a baby involved in that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. Um we me and Nick were talking about this the other day about like smaller promotions. I know you ref some of those. Mm -hmm. Uh and he used to train some fighters in combate. Mm -hmm. um, and we were wondering, have you ever seen, I know it doesn't probably happen in the bigger ones, but in the smaller ones where f fighters are throwing fights, and d what's the rules with refs stepping in if they notice, like, hey, man, why are you really disengaging or you're faking? You know, like, is, where is that line? Well, I mean, a lot of things are referees' discretion. So oh, okay. I think if it's, if it's pretty, uh, if you see something where you firmly, it's your discretion. And if you believe that... Uh, that they're making a mockery of the sport mm. and not fighting in earnest, you have the ability to do whatever you want to do there. Oh, you can just be like, it's off. This is horrible, yeah. yeah. No Even contest, if there's like, you know, oh, this, say, this, yeah, this, yeah. yeah, just rev it off and, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe disqualify one or disqualify both or, you know what I mean? You know, and there's, yeah, and and and, and there's the usual suspects. And, oh, and you okay. know who some of them may be. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, yeah. yeah you know. Oh, they're known. Got it. Yeah. yeah. They do Tail it on Cheeto a little bit. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, was the, that was the biggest one that everybody was tripping out about because there was like the little tap and it seemed like he was having a conversation because Chael was basically choked him out. Mm -hmm. And then you just see Chael let up. With after. Tito? Yeah. Oh, oh. That was a weird one that everybody still remembers. And I don't know, right? Just because I, it doesn't seem like Chell would be the person to throw a fight. But then, like, when you re-look at the whole thing, you see uh, Tito tap, and then Chell lets go a little bit, and then they kind of have, it seems like they're talking a little bit, and then he loses position. Really? You see, I didn't watch this. This wasn't in UFC, right? This was Bellator. 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 It was, Bellator. It was Bellator. super Bellator. controversial. Everybody yeah. was like, what the fuck oh, is wow. that? Oh, I didn't, wow. I didn't see this. Yeah. It's probably one of the only stain on, like, really, like, Chell's. Is, is that the one where Tito gets that? That Chell sometimes so is like not like being totally genuine or something. <laughs> <laughs> you telling me? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Chell's a character, dude. So like, I don't, I don't know what's going on in that guy's head. I feel like that guy uh, plays mind games all the time, though, huh? Like he he might be messing with his opponents constantly in the fight, so you probably don't really know like you know, what's, what's real. Mm, yeah. yeah. No, no, that guy is the funniest. Some of the funniest moments I've had has been a. Uh, Chell Sonnen. Really? Yeah. Like where you ref his fights or like just interactions with him overall? Uh, just uh, refereeing his fights, some interactions and stuff, you know what I mean? He could tell you anything with the most <laughs> sincere face. I mean, yeah. like, you believe anything he says almost. You know so I mean? if you, when you ref his fights, is he like talking to the guys? Like what are some funny okay, things Okay, the funniest one do? is, I've told this story once, but uh, we, um, him and Jason Lambert, and uh, he's fighting Jason, he's fighting this guy, and he... Uh, Okay, so the fighter keeps getting him. He's on top, and Chell's good at getting on top. And mm -hmm. the guy's trying to do an Ezekiel from the bottom. Um, I'm not going to say it can't happen because there's Alexi Olenek. <laughs> but besides Alexi Olenek, how many times have you seen an Ezekiel from the not guard? Many. Uh, mm -hmm. when? I mean, not besides, MMA. Besides, yeah, not MMA, besides him. So, like, he's doing this, and it keeps on going. It's every round, and the guy's corner saying, if you would let him go... The referee will stand you up, and, <laughs> and I think he's writing this out, and, you know, who knows? You know, you make a decision. Um, I uh, I stop it and stand him up, you know, mm -hmm. give him another chance, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the fight happens, and I think he takes him down again and whatever. And so then afterwards, um, the fight's over, and I come over to the channel, and he's really excited. He's like, he's like, okay, so I was making this noise in my throat, <laughs> and he thinks... 
that it's working. But it wasn't. So I just kept making the noise like, uh, uh, just uh, gurgling. Uh, <laughs> so oh, this guy's a frog. Ribbit. Ribbit. Because he's so excited about the trickery he used. It's like, yeah. he's more excited about that than And that's why he was still going for it. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and so then he tells me, and he goes, yeah, it wasn't even anywhere, it was nowhere near getting me. And so. He, I'm talking to Chell, and so Jason's here, and so Chell turns this way and he's walking here to talk to mm. Jason, and so when he comes to Jason, he goes, that choke, I was almost out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> and he, and I'm right there, I hear him This fool is hilarious. Him. And so, I mean, I, it just blew my, it was Blanket. so funny to me because for most of us, I think for any person in the world, Having an MMA fight is just enough to have your mind on your mind. But he's having fun. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're fighting MMA. I'm fighting for my life. But I'm having fun playing tricks. Yeah, that's, yeah. Where, that's where I'm. That's where I'm most excited this about. This me that Big Nog was trying to feed a bus. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, is this serious or is this a joke? Yeah, I can't yeah. tell. And so many times, like there's times where like he says it and he's so funny. I mean, he even, he even tells people he's like, so will this happen? So what I did here. Is what I used is what I did is I told a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that lie, I was able to, you know, like, so, Bro. yeah, now he's the best. So, yeah. speaking of like trash talk in general, have you, like, I'm sure there's fighters in there that we don't catch when they're just talking shit to each other or going back and forth. Do you, does that happen often or is that just like the big names that you see, like Kevin Holland oh, talks a lot, uh, you know, the famous stories about Habib, or is it like, are guys talking in there a good amount? Um, not a not a lot. Sometimes guys are. You yeah. know, I think it's entertaining when they talk. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like who are some people that you're like, oh, I get to hear this guy fucking okay. talk some shit. <laughs> I do. Um, what's his name? Uh, Roosevelt? Roosevelt, Roosevelt Roberts? Roberts. Oh, he's hilarious. Is he? Uh, oh, yeah. Because yeah. I'm not going to say who it was. You're going to have to find the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who he's fighting. But he's fighting this guy. And the guy was a tough guy. And he has like, and he had steamrolled a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. And he's going in there. And um, and then like you could see right when the, it's drawing on him that like, hey, this dude's not going anymore. Mm -hmm. Like where he's taking that breath and about to shift into the next gear. Like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to steamroll this guy. I'm about to have a fight. He takes that breath like... Okay, now it's time to go in and you know what I mean? And and right when he takes that breath, you can see it on his face, he's realizing that is he's, he's like, uh he's like, Oh yeah, yeah, that's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like that trash yeah. talk. Yeah. Yeah, that like, seems like fun positive can, trash talk. Can I, I've seen refs stop people from cursing. There's a rule behind that where you I, I there's something, there's a catch all rule like on uh I'm not sure if it applies there. I'm not much for stopping people from cursing. Mm -hmm. um, so Seems I mean, like good fun. If you if we're about to hit each other in the yeah. face, you're kicking each other in the head, if you're going to do some cursing. Now, there is uh, uns unsportsmanlike conduct that causes injury, and there's also um, the, the word is, um, there is a thing with the language. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the rule, I know the rule, but it's, it's uh, what's the word they use? But they use, um, there is... There is words in there, but as far as for what you say, mm -hmm. there is a rule in there. Um, and so there's a point, there's one time where I should have used it, I didn't. Mm -hmm. The guy was just beating this guy, and the guy was winning the, he was winning the fight, and the whole time, he's like, you know, you like that? Okay, show me your face, bitch. Though. Yeah, right there. Uh, like, it was oh, like, oh, it was like, interesting. and I was like, man, I would need therapy. Somebody should put a stop to this. <laughs> Me, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I, did, I would not let that happen. That was early on in the learning. Mm. If something disrespectful like that, I would, I'm like, no, that's too much. But as far as like, you know, just cuss words or, you know, getting in, you know. Mm -hmm. And the guy who, who did afterwards, he came, oh, I'm sorry about all the things I said. It just helps me get my head into the right space. <laughs> what I the feel fuck? like that's what it really is for a lot of these guys. Like, they yeah, kind of yeah. have to talk themselves yeah. up a yeah, little exactly. bit. Yeah, exactly. Just got to get my head. There's a certain space I need, and that's helpful to get there. Unless you're Habib and you're, like, just speaking matter of fact and being objective. Like, yeah. <laughs> Brother, I must fight for title. Like, you know, yeah. I'm supposed to fight for title. Oh, that, he's comedy. Yeah, that, that must have yeah. been insane, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Bobby yeah, Green's insane, this. too. Oh, yeah, Bobby, Bobby Green, but fun. I feel oh, like Bobby he talks Green. a lot. Come on. Bobby Green's the funnest. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Herb, you, uh, last time we were trying to make this happen, uh, I know you were busy with um, this other part of your life, being oh, a, pr okay. a promoter. Yeah, right? yeah. So Tell us a little about that. Yeah. So yeah. What we, we have uh, uh, Savant and I, we've been friends for a long time. We uh, promote an amateur event, uh, 
Proving Grounds is what uh, he used to have it before, and we're bringing it back. And man, it was so much fun. The way to look at it is, uh, it's the best day party in LA, mm -hmm. and it's gonna have the best fights, you know, featuring fights. And so, like, we make sure that it's in a nice little building. We make sure that there's gonna be, uh, you know, you can show up early for about an hour, hour and a half. There's gonna be a reggae band playing. Oh. There's gonna be cocktails. There's gonna be food. There's gonna be great food vendors. Last time we had barbecue. We had smash burger. We had tacos. We had. Uh, you know, fresh squeezed juice, <laughs> and uh, it's 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 a nice look inside. Yeah. Inside there was um, classic cars everywhere, and like featured and some really unique cars, like you know, one of a kind cars in there. Okay. There's like a million dollar Porsche that the reggae band's playing next. <laughs> a five hundred thousand dollar Nissan Skyline. You oh, know what sure. I mean? Stuff like that. I like how these fighters have starved themselves to make weight, and they just smell smash burgers. Like, <laughs> uh, like uh, hey, yo, let's right wrap now. this up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, but it was a lot of fun. Everybody uh, had a good time, and uh, I had fun doing it because, you know, I'm always at events, and I do small events, and most of the time I'm, you know, I, I want to interact with people. People appreciate what I, my contribution. They want to mm -hmm. talk to me, but I have to focus on getting back to do my rules and then in between my matches and the other things I'm doing. This one, I want to... Uh, I'm here to have fun and social relax mm -hmm. and enjoy, you know, the sport that I'm a part of. And, yeah. you know what I mean? Watch some great fights, eat some great food and hang out with people, you know. That's awesome. So is this like the future of Herb down the line? Less reffing, more of this or still reffing till? This is just one more aspect. Still <laughs> reffing, still uh, and, and promoting and, and doing these uh, amateur fights. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, it's, it's good. You know, we uh, so my, we just like to make it something fun and uh, do more than just put up a cage. Make it something that people will enjoy. It's on a Sunday always, uh, Sunday afternoon, you know, because we usually have some music, and uh, it's, a, it's a good time. Dude, we got to get David on the commentary for that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> really? I'm not trying to get fighters have... get pissed off at me, because I just be roasting people. <laughs> Rojas already hates me. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, it's like the Snoop Dogg you're right. I'm going to say some stupid shit all the time. Uh -huh. That boy got cakes on him. Look at him. <laughs> do the Instaguri roll. Yeah, yeah. he's going to like it. Yeah, that boy caked good. up like crazy. And then uh, for people that are like that want it, we've had a, we have a couple friends that are like talking about wanting to ref. How does someone get into what okay. you've done your whole career? Okay, now that's a good question because uh, Thank I you. have an MMA Thank referee course. Come Thank on. you for asking Come that. On. I'm here and I'm talking about, I should be talking. See, Chell Sonnen wouldn't have gone this far without talking about his mission. Wait, yeah. You got a plug, dude. I need to take <laughs> lessons from that guy. So, yeah, so I, um, one of the things I'm really excited about is I, I train officials, and I've been doing it for a long time. And what's really cool is, like, sometimes I go to events, and the inspectors, the referee, the uh, judges, everyone has been through my course, and it's a, it's a good time. And we, um, I travel to other countries, and uh, there it is. There's my guys there. People come from all over the world to uh, do my training course. Uh, it's three days. Uh, if you're a referee, you're gonna get three certificates. You're gonna mm -hmm. get inspector, judge, and referee. Uh, because referees are expected to know how to judge, but also, we all started off as inspectors. That's how I started. You know Larry Landless? Mm -hmm. You know him? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Larry Landless. For the audience, yeah, who's that? She's a ref? So Larry Landless was a ref. If you watch some of the older UFCs, Larry Landless was uh, one of the early referees. And uh, Larry Landless was, uh, you know, I used to train with Larry. He was our coach. Yeah, white hair, spiky, big dude, right? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, He's uh, OG yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I used to, you know, follow Larry around, you know. I mean, Larry was, everyone loved Larry. Larry, like, refereed a lot of our, um, a lot of, uh, you know, fights in the sport. And um, so I would uh, follow him around. He put me to work as an inspector. And I would, you know, help organize the back for him. And then it eventually led to me uh, refereeing matches. Mm. And that's how I got started. And uh, so, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, I think that there's, there's room, uh, California's pretty organized, and there's still uh, room for quality officials in California. But in the rest of the country, when you go to the amateur events, they need bodies, they need mm -hmm. people there, they, they have some referees, uh, pretty alternating as referees and judges, sometimes there's not inspectors. And that is, uh, that's something that, uh, if you like to be a part of things, you know, a lot of people, I know this about myself, there's, there's consumers and there's contributors. And I'm nothing wrong with a consumer, but somebody else is there, their hide of thing is like, I want to show up and, you know, and uh, 
the luxury car. I want to sit here. I want to drink champagne while it's going on. And if you give me a part of anything is I want to be a part of it. That's how I like to enjoy things. So if you're like that and you want to be a part of this sport and you're not fighting and you want to serve these athletes and keep them safe, it's, um, it's definitely a, a great community and a great uh, group. I don't want to say fraternity because there's a lot of uh, ladies who do it also, but it's a good group. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty hard to become a referee? Well, I mean, first, to become a referee, well, first of all, you should have some background in the sport, like we talked about earlier. Um, you, should, um, you should probably have the right whys. You know, and so there's sometimes people call me, go, oh, yeah, I'm thinking I, I walked away from my job the other day and I'm thinking this is what I want to do. And, you know, because they reached out to me and I, I usually call, talk to people on the phone who reach out to the website just to make sure it's a good fit for them. They're like, yeah, well, I'm not sure if this is what you're going to get out of. This is something that you do because you love it. Of course, mm -hmm. you get paid for it, but you do it because you love it. If you walked away from your job and you're looking, this might not be what's for you, you know, so you're going to have to. uh spend a lot of time doing it kind of be obsessive with it um yeah so it's not and there's competition with getting in referee high matches it's not something that you're going to come take this course and you're going to be refereeing the next ufc <laughs> you know yeah so it's a whole process yeah but you if pay you your enjoy it it's not it's a it's a journey that you uh like being a part of like i love the journey i traveled when i first started doing this i drove all over this side of the country you know what i mean refereeing fights and you know, uh, with Larry, me and Larry drove all over the place, up to Northern Cal and Arizona. And then my other road dog who I drove everywhere with was Cecil Peoples. Cecil oh, Peoples. Cecil Peoples, man. That, <laughs> wow, I haven't heard that name in so long. Man, Cecil told me, so. it was so much fun, like, you know, because he's kind of like, you know, an uncle to me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, uh, man, he told me so many great stories, like these old, like, karate day stories, like, you know. Like, you know, the... Little the, karate guys would fight each other? Yeah, like okay, that? so we're doing... um this um, proving grounds, you know, we theme them after like 80s, like, you know, fun fight culture. The first mm -hmm. one was all themed out like uh, Street Fighter. Dope. And then this one, all the theme is like, uh, is uh, blood sport. Oh, oh, oh sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that's I love, awesome. I mean, I was thinking, I was talking about it yesterday. <laughs> like, I love that movie. And I remember I was, I was probably 18 when it came out, but I still had a big imagination. I, you know, I wanted it to be a true story because it says it's a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> it's, it's based, I, I, and I started hearing that it wasn't, you know, I still like, I didn't want to believe Santa Claus wasn't real, but. Uh, it's real to me, damn it. <laughs> but, but, but Cecil told me that Zane Frazier, who was in UFC 1, mm. and that guy Frank Dukes had an actual fight, like, with karate techniques and everything, a live fist fight. Oh, shit. And this one dude went into a stance like this and, like, yeah. Tiki torches everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there was events like blood sport that was real, right? Because mm -hmm. I think they had, I'm not sure if like that. Kumites? Whole, like the Kumite thing? type yeah. of thing is real, though, right? I don't, don't know. I mean, I've never been to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, underground back then. I, well, that, I was, you know, when that movie came out, I was 18, so I wouldn't have probably have gotten to it, but where everyone's brought there and they're fighting to the death. I, you know, I'm not sure if death, you have to be in the scene that I'm not in to know where. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. I loved uh, that movie. It's so good, dude. Freaking brick don't hit back. You know what uh -huh. I mean? I love that shit. <laughs> oh, what's that? Dim Mock. Show us Dim Mock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the board and the board and the, under the brick. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. He's a you are not a Tanaka. Oh, my favorite line? Get out of here, round eye! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite line. Yo, I was like, I'm a use that. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck get... you, round eye. <laughs> so this commentating thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's in, dude. Celebrity He's commentator. And everybody hates me. He's like, this guy's roasting us too much. <laughs> hey, round eye! <laughs> round eye. Round eye's winning, dude. Uh, so to, to wrap this up, I'm going to... We're all gonna do a one question to Herb about not MMA related to the personal Herb. Anyone? Personal Herb. The personal Herb. I feel like everything is MMA related. So I'm gonna ask you, what are your hobbies outside? Of That's what I want to know. Yeah. Arts. <laughs> okay. What I like to, you know what? Um, like grappling, <laughs> Muay Thai. Yeah, that's martial. Yeah, yeah. I like to do that. <laughs> Let me see. What else do I like to do? Well, you know, I like to play guitar. Oh, I do that. Yeah, a lot. Let's go, musician. Yeah. So I, yeah, I inflict. Uh, you know, my acoustic guitar on my wife all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time yeah. That's my, that's my wind down. Yeah. Uh -huh. I enjoy that. 
Every now and then, I've inflicted my verses on people at an open mic. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, it's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's horrible. Wait, spoke. <laughs> it's spoke horrible. <laughs> oh, no, I used to, I used to, I used to like to do hip hop. So you know, okay. but uh, no, no, I was doing my getting oh, my dope. singer songwriter. Oh, on this. oh huh. dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? I've, I never knew that about Herb Dean. Dude, put that. Well, I've known you for a long time. Yeah. Well, crazy story. I was oh. telling these guys. Oh, yeah. My first MMA class, my first combat sport class ever was at Fight Academy. And it was Wednesday night. It was the MMA class wow. taught by Herb. Oh, yeah. And I was my first class I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit, that's Herb Dean. And we just mm -hmm. did we did wall wrestling in the cage at the mm -hmm. time at yeah, the old, yeah. on the Old Valley. Wall one. wrestling. And, right? And, yeah. then, and then now fast forward to us mm -hmm. now, we're like, oh shit. Probably taught you how to set up a shot after a jab or something. <laughs> yeah, like no, that's that. exactly yeah. what it was. <laughs> that's yeah. that's what the what yeah. the whole class was. And I was like, oh, this is really fucking cool. And then I after that, I signed up ever since. student. Hmm? How was Nick as a student? Was he an angry person? <laughs> <laughs> just kept yelling at people. I'm not a round eye. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, what was oh, that actually, child like? He was really fun to train with. Actually, he was. Uh, yeah, no. We yeah. we used to train back. In the, mm -hmm. We used to just have like Eve's Edwards would come down and oh, train wow. sometimes. Oh, that's cool. Oh. And like I would just be like, I can't believe I'm training with these guys on like a Tuesday morning at like 10 a.m. And <laughs> man, it was crazy when you roll with Eve's, like because you don't realize how like this dude's got strong legs. Yeah. Right? Dealing with his guard is like, and he's just so like, uh, so he has good. so much experience, mm -hmm. right? And he's so crafty, and he's just like, hey, let me show you. He showed me like, he showed me this one detail about single legs that just changed how we do single legs all together. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd never seen that from any other tutorial right. or anything. It's just like, oh, dude, her Eve's, Ed, Eve's Edwards is the man. Yeah. yeah, he he showed me something. I'm not gonna tell you what it was because he told me don't show me don't. <laughs> but he told me that it was like. I worked on it for a while and it was like one of my go-tos that like, you know how you have something that like you kind of catch everybody with until mm -hmm. you get bored with it? Yeah. Yeah, that was like one of those, like, you know? You're like, this is just too easy. I don't even yeah. want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just subbing everybody. It's just not fun. <laughs> not fun. Yeah. I need to lose again. <laughs> <laughs> so Herb, where can people find you to get more, just see what you're doing, information about the uh, promotion and also uh, referee school? HerbDean.com uh, will definitely show you about the referee school and then... Uh, Proving Grounds MMA, yeah. What's the next show? Um, the next show for Proving Grounds is June thirtieth. June thirtieth. Uh, all the links for all this fun stuff are in my bio. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the things that you like. Uh, I even do cameo. I like doing it. Come on. Ooh. Oh yeah. No, no. It's, it's really fun. I get to be a part of graduations and babies being born and people getting married and stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. You're gonna get so many requests out. Er, play me some uh, guitar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I want some uh, spoken word. <laughs> 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 Jazz is <laughs> is something. Hot <laughs> buttered sunshine. <laughs> through my... Give it up for spoken work artist Herbie. <laughs> Come on, musician, singer, songwriter. <laughs>